So I've been asked a very interesting question just recently on my YouTube videos, and that is where my ideas come from for all the reclaim stuff that I collect. And the person's asking, what catches your eye and imagination? And do, I, do I have a list of things in my head or is it just spontaneity? They'd like to add a few bits of their own and they don't know what to look for or where to put them. So what I'll do is I'll go through a, a few bits of my own that I've collected over time and the thought process that goes with them. So we'll, as we're looking at it, we'll start with this. And this is a reinforcing bar or a reinforcing mesh that usually goes into concrete. Now, as you can see, I've used it here as a sort of feature for the climbers that I'm putting up at the pergola at the moment. This is the cloister pergola. And that's what I'm doing with this. I'm putting them up in all these sections. Now, the first time I used this was in 2004 when I was on BBC Gardener of the Year and I was a finalist and I used one of these features in that very show. But what I did do with it, and just this is just another idea for yourselves, if should you wish to try it, was I actually had a loose bit of this actually attached via some eyes. So some little metal eyes hung down and then the wire mesh hung off of it and swung independently so it wasn't fixed like it is here and it swung independently and that just came about as a sort of an idea out of my head now i'd prefer to come up with my own ideas and i can't say where these things come from all i can say is that i am also an artist i made this very thing myself this is this is from a previous life of work i used to do and this is a stained glass panel the original traditional stuff uh, and I'm very artistic. For those interested, I also have an art page <laughs> called Richard Chuck Arts. If you want to check that out on Instagram, you'll see what sort of artwork I do as well. And I do kind of stained glass stuff. So I'm, I'm very much a creative, what I'd call a creative, an artistic creative. So I'm always, always coming up with ideas in my head of things to do. So it's not something that you can be taught and it's not something that I've been taught. It's something that just comes naturally. So as to where I get these ideas, that's that's all I can say to you, is that I, I come up with these crazy ideas. I'm always wanting to be different. I'm always wanting people to look at my stuff and think, wow, that's brilliant. I wish I'd thought of that, and that's that's great again. But I also want to give you all ideas as well. That's partly the reason I do these videos as well, is to give you ideas. So we'll go through a few of them on this video and show you just, just where these ideas come from. Now this I affectionately term the polo. This is a, a little round window that I got from somebody up in Yorkshire, a friend of Cathy's, gave me this. They took it out of their 1970s house and I just simply put it aside and then just waited for the right time, an application. And it came. I've had several other ideas where it could have gone, as you all know if you've watched my videos. I've had other ideas where I could have put it, but eventually we settled on this. So that's just a window from an house, and it is a double glazed one. There you go. Uh, it doesn't need to be double glazed, obviously, but I wasn't going to take the panel out, so I simply left it, and I've made it fit into here. This, it's still not 100% finished, that, but that will come on another video. So I'm setting a scene, really, as you can see so this is a cloister pergola and i've tried to find stuff to reuse within it because that's kind of my ethos i like to not only use new stuff but i also like to use the unusual the wacky and the reclaimed this is barbed wire now most people would put just ordinary climbing wire that you grow plants along and you can buy that on reels and rolls but what i decided was i wanted to be a little bit more wacky so I've actually used a thinner type barbed wire, which is working very well. And as the plants grow up, they'll be able to attach themselves to these little barbs and have a better way of clinging onto the wire. And it makes it a little bit more interesting. That's all it is, a little bit more interesting. And it does get a few comments when people come in and see it, because they're not expecting that. They're expecting just to see plain wire up there. But why be boring? So that's what I've put there. So also in this cloister pergola, I've got these, or one of them anyway, a, a cow drinker. This, were, this was an original cow drinker. 
and as the name suggests cows drunk out of it in actual fact there's another one the other side we'll go through there in a minute um, and this was an original cow drinker so these type of things can be found all over the place i'd i had this is one time when i decided uh, purposely to look for these things because i wanted to use them as raised planters or features within a border so that's why i picked this so i found this on a, a farm in fact I found two in fact three actually and i've reclaimed them basically there's two or three things you can do with these one i'll show you later it's got a different sort of approach to it and then two of these ones i've actually used to contain plants it's early in the season we're at the end of april so not everything's growing at the moment things are growing quite well in them and all i've simply done is placed it in here into the cloister pergola filled it with soil from out the garden nothing special just put just put garden soil in there and put some plants in a little round ball you can see there was the float that allowed the water to come in and out so that would have been fixed to that nut at the back there and it would have gone up and down and as the water got to the right level it would have stopped it but why why throw it away just put it i've just put it in there for a bit of interest again and i've also saved the little pipes that came with it don't know what i'm going to do with those just yet but i've just left them there for now to see what we can do with them and i will find a use for them eventually So while we're here, we'll also show you this. So this is, it's really a plant support. And basically that wire ring at the top was given to me by a friend and he in turn got it from someone else from a nursery. I'm still not 100% sure what they use that for, but I did used to go to the same nursery and I seem to recollect they used to sit on the floor and just contain plant pots within it so the plant pots will just sit in there this would sit on the floor because as you can see there there's a stand so it would just simply stand on the floor plant pots would sit within it and it would help to stop them falling over as simple as that i've also added this copper piping and this is just plumbing copper piping and what it does is it makes it a little bit more interesting so I'm just, what I'm really trying to say is that I'm just, this is just a plant support. So as you can see from the side, it's quite high at the moment. I'm going to actually drop that by probably a foot. And then what happens is this is Elianthus salisfolius and that grows quite tall and it has an annoying habit at some point of flopping. And then it picks itself back up, but I, I want to contain it. So it's straight up in the air. So I've done that as a plant support. So rather than go out there and buy expensive plant supports, I've reclaimed these and I've come up with a clever idea. So it's just, again, it's just an idea in my head that I came up with. I hadn't seen anybody else doing it. And maybe there is somebody out there that's already done that, but I've not seen that. Now this section is the section I'm working on at the moment. and. I guess railway sleepers is the most common thing that people will use and and i won't go too much into these because it's obvious what you can do with railway sleepers you can use them as raised borders you can use them as edging to paths like i've done here and eventually don't forget that's going to have a brick inlay all the way up here and i've used them in that context but it's part of the garden now it's become interesting and again another cow drinker is there part of the scene part of the garden making it look nice Behind that is this grill. And this was claimed by myself when we was working on a particular old building on an old farming estate. And it actually covered, what, what would it be? It's a cellar. It covered a cellar. And it was no use in an ornament really because it let the water through. So it was replaced with a wooden structure to stop that. And it was just gonna get scrapped. So I just rescued it and put it here. Hopefully over time that's going to settle in. It's going to have planting growing around it, up it and through it. So over time that's going to look really, really good. Now I collect a lot of these things and these are quite accessible and easy to find in most places. Reclamation yards, look on marketplace on the internet. If you've got the local marketplace on your, 
on your Facebook pages, you'll find this kind of thing all the time. This actually was reclaimed by a lad who, who works just up the road and he advertised it on Facebook. I knew the lad, I was amazed to see that he was advertising this. So I think I paid about 20 quid for that. And it's actually a water vessel. So it turns up the other side and it contains water. Well, it leaks. So there's absolutely no point in using that as a water vessel anymore because it can't contain water. So I've simply used it as a feature within the border. I've put the two stone doves on there and that's how I've done it. And it sets the scene. So I guess each time I do something like this, I am almost set dressing. It's like, I'd probably be very good in the theater doing set dressing in that because I come up with these ideas to, that I think will look good for a camera. And they do. Now, this is a bale sheep feeder, and these this isn't a reclaim, but I've always wanted one of these, and there's three of these in this garden. There are bigger ones. There's ones called cow bale feeders, and they're a lot taller than that and a lot bigger. This feeds sheep and pigs, and what they basically do is they throw a bale, a round bale, inside of that, and then the pigs or the sheep put their heads through those bars, and they actually eat the straw or whatever feed has been put in there so i've always wanted one of those because years and years and years ago i wanted to get older one and i could have done but i've been moving around a bit so i never bothered uh, and the bigger one would look equally as interesting if not better but what i do with these is i contain different plants in them as i said i've got three different planters of that type. One contains that which is a Persicari polymorpha and then this one contains a silver birch and some geraniums which are still maturing and growing in there but that simply again just sets the scene. No reason for it, just looks nice. It's part of the cloister pergola or part of that area. So I take lots of pictures in this garden as you know. I put them on Instagram oh, um, at one, and I just like to take pictures of them just to inspire people really so again these these ideas are in my own head as i said i'm very creative and i'm constantly thinking about what i can get what i can reclaim again is a ribbed water container another water vessel again doesn't hold water anymore absolutely no point in using it for that so I make it part of a border that's what i do it's made part of a border and i think it looks great so as you're probably aware, if you've watched other YouTubes of mine, you'll have seen me do a little one on this actual gate here. This was a gate. It belonged sort of on a, not sort of, it, it belonged on a road that blocked off an entrance to a mine, which was a stone, what was it, ironstone mine. It, just, it was just on a road to stop people going up there. And it was taken away, and I, I was told it was taken away 40 years ago, and it's, it's always been at the back of a building where I, I found it. And it was just leaning there, and I've been looking at it for the past seven years, and eventually asked whether I could have it. They let me have it, because it was just going to be put in the scrap pile. Now, it was a gate. I've decided that it would make a great backdrop as a fence. So what I've done, as you can see, and as I showed the other day, is I've made it a backdrop for that and it looks great and then because I've got a wooden structure to the left the, the fence there and then the gate which is now a fence also I needed to make them work together so what I did was I did put that ribbed container there to, uh, to sort of like unify the two so it looked better and it does look better and as plants grow it'll look even better now, one of the things I do use a lot of are dustbin lids, because they're brilliant. Not only as small, shallow containers to put things like sempervivums in, if you pierce the bottoms of them, they make great containers for a bit of soil in it, but also they're good for bird baths. And that's what I've done with this one. So this is part of my wildlife area. And these are what I call dip pools. And we've got three of them, so the, the dustbin is one of those. And that's what I use them for. Now, just behind them, as you can see, there's another good use of 
clay pipes. Now they're clay pipes and they're simply there again to look good, to set the scene. And eventually I will stuff things into that pipe for the wildlife, you know, for the insects to crawl into. And that, that all adds interest again. I suspect at some point we'll get frogs and toads in here and they may even use those pipes to hide in. Other things that I tend to use are these containers. Now at the moment I've not refreshed these containers. I tend to go through a point where I do actually start take, either taking things out or putting things in. And I'm nearly at that point now where I've got to do that. This one contains a Euphorbia grithii dixter and it's not doing very well at my fault because I split it and I put it back in when I shouldn't have done at that particular time. The other one behind it's got Plyblastis in, a type of small bamboo that's quite aggressive. Then we've got Lysomachia clethroides in that round one which is just about coming up. And then we've got grass in this front one here. And that's just an ordinary pot, so that's not reclaimed. But they all look well together and I use them quite a lot. This is an old galvanised dustbin, and the older ones are better, to be honest, and I'll show you a, a cracking one in a minute. And all I've done with this one is I've cut the bottom off. I've used the bottom, actually, on one of them, not on this particular one because it was too rotten. I've used it to actually plant sempervirens, and again, as I suggested with the dustbin lid, you could do that. Well, I've also done it with a dustbin bottom, so I've cut the bottom off one, used that as a sempervirum sort of display, and then this one's got in a Chinese rhubarb, which is Rheum australe, and it's a bit of an aggressive spreader, so I decided I needed to contain it. But it looks great in here, and it just gets better and better as it goes along. Now, one of my key features when I used to do a lot of design work was I used to put these in. It's like a signature of mine, and these are telegraph poles. And I use them like this. Now, on one particular garden that I had, I had five of these quite tall ones all together in a similar fashion. One of them contains the owl, which is a bronze owl there. And that is a cracking, well, it's a cracking owl, really. It's great. It's bronze made out. It's a cast bronze owl. It sits up there, artist made, and that's a copy of it that I bought at one of the big garden shows. And as I said, this is like a key feature of mine. I used to put these into most gardens. I didn't always use things like this. I, I would use smaller posts. So these little, these are also telegraph poles and these are off cuts off of those particular, off these ones. So these are just off cuts. And, and I would do smaller ones, but always threes, fives or sevens. And then what I do is on my own, never done it on any other one that I've put in a garden, but I put chains onto them, as you can see. And that's kind of symbolism, as far as I'm concerned. That's almost saying I'm tied to my garden. I'm chained to the garden, which obviously I'm not, because I love it. Absolutely love it. But it's kind of a symbolism to that, because we all feel at times that, that that's exactly the case, that we have jobs and jobs become chores. And once a chore, a job becomes a chore or a chore becomes a job, then it, it becomes a, a bit of a nightmare. So that's kind of to symbolise that. Again, I've got a sheep feeder here. They call them bale ring feeders. And it, again, it's simply there as a feature in this particular border. This is the owl border, and it's in here just to contain these grasses. I've also got a bamboo barrier. You can see the black lining at the back there, and that is a bamboo root barrier. That is to stop this aggressive grass actually coming out. Make sure it doesn't escape, because it will be all over the garden if I allowed it to, do, to be. But what that's gonna do is it's gonna give it an unnaturalistic look, that grass, as it grows. And as you can imagine, as you know, and you can see, it's a round ring. So it's gonna form a round formation of grasses, tall grasses, and this grass, all these grasses will get as tall as the owl there, and that's about 10 foot. And that's what it generally does. That, that grass can actually grow a lot taller than that, but not in, not in the UK, it tends to stick around 10 foot maybe 12 in a good year and it will make that this season and I just wanted to contain it just wanted to make it look good now rocks it goes without saying again I come across rocks all the time and it comes without goes without saying that it's so, so easy to use rocks in your garden edgings of paths 
is a great use of rocks. So, oh, I mentioned that dustbin, the good dustbin. This is, these are the proper dustbins that the old dustbin men used to use. And these are good. And again, this comes from a friend up in Yorkshire. But this one hasn't got a leak, so I'm using it to contain the water. So I have quite a few plants down here that like a bit more water. So it's great to have this here. So when it rains, it, it floods over as well. But I've been very clever about it and put myself Osmundo regalis. That tiny little thing there is Osmundo regalis. Will eventually make five, six foot. And it's in an ideal location for that overspill. Because it would like a more moist area to grow in. So that's going to do the trick. This is another dustbin ready to go. This is the one that sprung the leak and has been replaced by that old one I've just shown you. And I am going to chop the base off this one. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take it higher up on this one. and I'm going to make more of a feature of this planter and then the top will be used to contain something else. And I'll just find a place for it in the garden somewhere, as I do, and it will become a planter in the garden. It's so easy to do. You can pick those dustbins up, I think, for about 25, 30 pound in the UK, or you can find them on reclaim sites. So this is the, the Anderson Shelter Arbor Seat that I made. And if you look again on my YouTube, you'll, you'll find how I did that. And this is what it is. So this is actually a pig arc that they use for the pigs. So when the pigs are in the fields, you see those arcs, this is part of it. And this is just one section of it. And then what I did, I found the corrugated straight pieces. And that was actually hidden behind a brick wall in a barn until the owner actually ran into the brick wall. And we had to go in there and take it down. And we found that. We actually found those straight pieces there and that just absolutely suited it. So I use this for sitting in and it's a nice relaxed area to sit in. And this is the nook, now called the nook, nook used to be called the secret garden, now is the nook. And I really enjoy being down here. So this is an old, what they call an old copper. And that was found in an house where it was no longer needed. You find these things all over reclaimed places. Now, if I turn that upside down, it would have contained water. And what it was used for was in old sheds in the back in the day, people would put their washing in that and they'd have a fire underneath it, a brick. It, it was sort of like sat on bricks. It wasn't sort of sat on bricks. It was sat on bricks. bricks a brick section was made for it. it would sit within. You'd light the fire underneath it and then you'd wash your clothes in it, apparently. And I decided, I actually turned upside down, drilled the holes in and put these in. And these are, as you can see, little fern sculptures that I, I, f I found on the internet, bought off the internet. They were shiny silver then, intended to go rusty. And it just works a treat. And then what they're doing is they're picking up on these ferns. So it's, again, the thought process is tie it into something. So I've tied it into these ferns and they look really nice with them. And it's one of the things I actually enjoy sitting here and just looking at, just staring at. I don't, I can't explain why. It's, as I said, I'm a, I'm an artist. I'm a creative. We are always a little bit loosely wrapped, shall I say, in a good way. And we like to come up with different things, unusual things. But as you can see, the little bird bath on the left, further up there, up there. I also buy normal stuff. Okay, let's move to these. Now, these are off the old gramophones. There were three of these, and I was a bit annoyed because I actually missed out on the third one. And what I've done at the moment is just, I've just got them sat there, just looking, well, just looking like the look at the moment. But what I fully intend to do with these is put them onto some sort of a stick or another piece of metal, and I'm going to put them within a flower border. So let me just stand that one up, if I can. No, it's not going to stand up. So basically, that's going to sit in a flower border, both of them are, up on sticks. So if I've got a big clump of, say, flowers, say something like the Elianthus, I could sit them at the side of it, or the Rudbeckias, Asters, etc., etc. I could sit that within it, and it'll look like upturned flowers. So it looked really interesting. And it's just another way to use them. If I wanted to, I could just simply hang them up on some ropes in a tree and let them swing about. And again, it just cause, oh, it would just give you a little bit of interest. 
So again, reinforcing mesh. This was to disguise this area because I wanted it to be more private. So I simply got the corrugated metal sheets, as you can see, and then I've screwed this wire against it. And then we're growing up an ivy. And eventually that will cover all of that, create this natural green wall. And that'll look really nice here, eventually. It's all going to take time. So I often, I, I reclaim stuff as well. So I've got this weather vane here, and that, I love this weather vane. I bought it out of an antique shop local to us. And it cost me about 100 quid, I think. And it's brilliant. And what I did was I, got, I just got this post, put it on here, put it in here. And I actually originally used this as a bird feeding station, but, I, but because we've now got Amish the cat, I quickly realised it was going to make a five-star cafe for him if the birds came here feeding. And he was just going to spend his time sat here, as cats do, waiting for the prey. So I changed it into just the weather vane, which was always its original attention anyway. And I used to have them stuck on there, so they would be little posts that came out and then all the bird feeders would stick on it. But because my garden is now maturing and, well, not maturing, but now it's bigger, it's got a lot more to offer the birds and they can simply whiz around the garden and find their own food. And that's just a simple post that I've put in. Okay, so I love telegraph poles. poles. And this one was... Well, it's a, a telecoms one, so it's for the phone lines. And it was actually on a farm where it got knocked over, the post got knocked over, a car ran into it, broke it down, and it fell down, and then it's been chopped and replaced with another pole. A chap I knew, put it next to the skip where I work, knowing full well that I would pull that out or pull it away from the skip, and I did just that. And I've just simply used it for this. It's just another interesting focal point. And I, I really like that. I mean, that, that's a little blackbird there. And actually, blackbirds do get confused by that. And I often find them sat with it. And that's just a simple tin, tin blackbird that sat on top of that. But it just makes it interesting. And it's just a feature for that border. So that makes that interesting. And as you can see, I use quite a lot of telegraph poles. Now, this, this archway here, I, I term it the Flintstones arch, simply because on the film and the cartoons, you would see this sort of arch on the Flintstones programs or cartoon, and it, it would have the Flintstones written across the top there. And I just thought, well, that's, that's really nice. I like that, so we'll use that. So I've used that. I'm, I'm actually thinking, I've got another idea. I won't say too much about it at the moment, but I've got another idea on what I can do just to add to this. Uh, this here is a post, and it's a gate post, just a gate post. And it would have been seven foot tall originally, again taken off a farm. The bottom of it was absolutely rotten for about two feet. And the chap was going to burn it. it. It was actually on the burning pile. It was ready to be cut up for a burning on the log burner. I saw it, and I rescued it, and I put it in here because I knew straight away where that would go. So sometimes you do get these ideas straight away where you think it might go, and in this case, I had the idea straight away where I wanted it. And so it is. There it is. Next to that Pittosporum tom thumb, and it has one or two plants growing up around it. That'll be more obvious as summer pops in. And I leave always, always always leave little bits on i never take them off you've got to be brave to do that just leave them on everything like that just looks so interesting and again going back to the telegraph poles if you can make out on the left hand pole i've left all the signage on it as well i do not take them off i just leave them alone now these are or were deer fencing And I was given those two by a couple of friends. I won't name the big house, but they, were, they contained deers. And the fence, what happened was the wire comes through those holes and it would go along the top of a wall. There's another one there. It would go along the top of a wall and contain the deer from jumping over. So the, it would be the wall or a piece of wood and then that would just be a topper, really, I guess. And it would stop the deer jumping over. And I was given those 
and I'll absolutely love them. I just wish I could get more of them. And I just use them there as like an entrance. I hesitated there because I was trying to think why that why I did put them there. But it's, this is an entrance, really. That's all it is. So this path here was one of the first paths to go in. And what I did do was put telegraph poles again at the side of it. Don't really need it. I mean, I could I could find a much better use for those telegraph poles. But I absolutely love them there. This side of the garden at the moment is a border that I'm, I'm messing about with again. It'll probably sit like this for another year until I get really on top of it or what I want to do with it. But for now, it's going to remain as it is. And I love to do this sort of thing. And as you can see, there you go, down that side as well. Now, originally, when I was building this pergola, it had two different, uh, sorry, four different legs. And those legs are now on the floating deck down the bottom there that you can see. I use them very eventually because I just thought they would be better for that and I'd like to use these instead and I bought all of this this is larch and uh, Scots pine and I had these cut to size and then I've cut the shapes in myself so I've, all them sh all that shaping is just simple cutting and I've made them fit onto there and it looks great and at night time we have a neck curtain of stuff and it lights it up. There's a little wire on those underneath each one's a, each piece of that wood along these fins. There's a there's a long strip of wire and it comes on at night. And it looks great. Now I collect a lot of these little things. Now these would have been old water containers up in your attic. A header tank is what the common name is. They would have been used. And I'll show you a few more in a minute. I've got a what have I got in that? Oh, I've got a a little bulrush a tiny tiny bulrush in that one so it's it's typhina minima it's a little at the moment we're having a bit of a change around here because i don't really want that there i want this moving because what i've also got here is this here even though this looks half empty you think that's a leak and i thought it was a leak but that little plastic thing back there is a is a fountain so when the sun comes out it spurts out the water at the top and what's been happening is the water's been coming out during windy days it blows it out so you've got to keep filling it back up and that's what i do now that was actually a drinker for a, a couple of donkeys in a field and it was again getting moved and it was going to be thrown away because they like to use modern plasticky things now because it's more hygienic etc etc whereas i like to rescue them and use them for this so we'll fill that back up and that looks great again looking great Now this is a self-explanatory really, it's an old well plump, pump and the bit below it that's in with it, that is, that's where the drain pipe would have come down on the corner of an house and, and then the, drain, the water would have drained away down into a pipe and gone away to a dike or whatever. I've used it like this to add this interest and, I, and it's one of my favourite bits that I've, that I've created and again it's quite obvious what you can do with that. Now one property that I had I actually had a tub underneath it and we had a, a golden hack and a clover. So it's the Japanese forest grass sat underneath it and it looked like it was uh, water pouring out of it. And then at another one, I had a blue one, which was even better because it was a blue, not a blue hack and a clover, but a blue grass, a lamus. Oh, Elimus Magellanicus rather. So it's a blue grass. So it looked like water pouring out and it looks really interesting. But the hack and the clover was the better one, even though it wasn't the right color blue to make it look like it was water. It looked very effective again i collect rocks just a bit of imagination placing them all looks good interspersed with plants which i've done it's a seating area reclaimed stone again slabs these were already in the garden actually they were hidden away under different plant pots around the corners of the building and what a waste of time putting them there so i've reclaimed them lifted them up again reused them rather and put them there and they look good, that's a nice seated area. So containers again, more containers. I pick these up all over. Again, this one come off Marketplace. I use it to contain water so I can, it actually self fills itself. I don't fill that up, but should I need to, there's a tap next to it and I can fill it up. But look at that, that looks terrible compared to this. That looks beautiful. As of yet, don't have a use for it fully. 
I've got to place it better than it is there because it has that lovely little brass tap on it, which is really interesting. And that's really nice. So we'll move on to this. These are oil drums. And obviously anything that can contain something is, is definitely a container. It's for me, it's, it goes without saying that if it's, if it can contain soil, then I can grow something in it. it, gives me more options. And it's way better than buying these types of plant pots. There's nothing wrong with these. If this is all you can stretch to, it's absolutely fine. But by far better for me are these rusty, it's rusty gold, isn't it, this stuff? And you can see what I'm intending to do here. I'm gonna make a bit of a feature. I'm gonna plant a load of stuff in here. I don't need to, I could actually just put loads of plant pots in there and lift them up uh, and give them an effect. But what I should do is I'll make it more permanent. I'll, put, I'll fill it with soil and each year we can change the display that we do put in there. Behind them is a cow feeder as opposed to a cow drinker. And these are quite long. Then what are they? They must be 10 foot long, those. And obviously, as the name suggests, they fed cows in barns over winter. They used to put the food into that. Again, they were being binned. They were going to be put into a metal skip and weighed in. Why do that when you can create this? And that's what I've done. So we've given them... Let's show you down there so you get a better idea what it looks like. So I've simply sat them on bricks, sat them against the wall, which is good, because they've got flat backs, remember? And it just looks really good. I really like them. And I've planted up, as you can see, accordingly. Bearing in mind what sort of sun it gets. So all of these will do well in part shade. So other interesting things I find are things like this. This was actually sat at a house full of water and it was covered in grass. You didn't even know it was there. The only reason I spotted it was because there was water in it. And I spotted it, asked if I could have it. The person said I could, they didn't want it. And that's what I've done with it. Put that plant in it and it, it looks really effective. That's beautiful. And then there's a bucket there and that's a green bucket, which is more unusual. You tend not to find these, you tend to find galvanized buckets. In this case, I found this green bucket that contains a pitosporum. And that looks really nice. That can be moved around as and when I wish it to. And there's just an ordinary plant pot. So you've got that plant pot or that plant pot. Now, equally, they both do the same job. But to me, that has the edge and contains that pittosporum. That has a pine in there. And this has yucca rostrata, that particular plant. I meant to mention that. That's yucca rostrata, and that looks really nice in it. I also collect this type of thing. Look, again, header tanks, the more interesting ones have the studs. They look good, so good for containers. The dustbin ready to do its thing there. There's another feature I've made here. This has got a, I can't show you it properly yet because it's not actually up. I've not got it running here at the moment, but basically, let me show you if I can set it up. There's a tap there, an old tap. I had those pipes produced really well made so that I could put them in there and then this is simply a sump contains water or will contain water it's got a pump in there already I've used it before but I've not used it since we've been here and basically the water is recycled round drops into that sump itself and just continues to go so it can be transported anywhere wherever I want that to as long as I can get electricity to it that can be transported around the garden for looks and we have ribbed dolly tubs, containers, containers, containers. Always think containers. Every little round thing can be a container. This was found again on a farm. They had a piece of wood over the top of it. And all they did was mix chemicals on top of it. So I asked them if I could have it, took it away. And it must contain, what, 40 gallons, if not more, of water in there. And that looks effective. So that's... That's what I do. I collect things. I collect old, rusty things, things that are containers, things that make back structures, things that make interest in the borders. And I put them in where, according to where I think they will go. And sometimes I can move it a week later, wherever I put it, because sometimes it doesn't work. Time, experience will teach you that. 
teach you what to do with them. Don't ever get too caught up in, you've put it there and it's gonna stay there. You need to think, is it looking good there? If not, can I move it? If you can move it, move it, if it needs to be moved. I do it all the time. So we'll finally end up on this. This here is just a lovely old galvanized bucket. It's very, very small indeed. It's been bashed and battered in time. And this, you won't believe this, a bit crude this. I used to go for a pee behind this hedge, a uh, place we was working at, time and time again. And, because obviously we work outside, and this was under the edge line. And one day I spotted it. And it was all but hidden completely, apart from the handle and a little bit at the top bit. And I pulled it out just to reveal that. And that looks absolutely stunning. And it now contains a little hosta called Devon Green, which is a smaller growing one. And it looks fantastic when it gets going in that. Bashed old bucket, who would think? But that can be moved wherever I wish to put that, I can move it. And it looks really good. So there we go. This video is a little bit longer, but I did want to go more into depth. So to Stacey who asked the question, thank you very much. A very interesting question. But you've got to have a creative mind to be able to do these things. This is why I show you on videos what I do. I do this to inspire you and to give you ideas of how you can create this sort of look yourself. It's what I like doing. And I hope that's helped you. Any comments, post them up. Any questions, post them up. And I shall talk to you on the next one. If you've made it to the end of this video, again, give yourself a pat on the back. Well done. And I'll talk to you on the next one. Ta-da.